So today I've got some Lomography Phantom 8, which is a black and white film. It's basically Lomography just being Lomography. It's ISO 8. Let's see how this turns out. It's going to be quite hard to shoot, I think. Um, I'm going to take a stroll with Ruben through London. You join me here in Regent's Park, uh, where we're going to start this walk. Ruben's kindly uh, let me use his FE2, because my contacts has broken. So yeah, let's see, let's see what this, this roll's all about. It's like the red is slightly unmatched, the red on the jumper. Is it? Should I take it? <laughs> you roll it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what are you saying, it doesn't match? No, yeah, look. Look at the colour of it as well. Thumbnail. Look at the colour of that. So, the lowest this camera goes down to ISO wise is 12 and I've got it on exposure compensation plus one stop so I think it'll work out even though it's a cloudy day if I aim at the sky I'm getting a 500th of a second and then if I aim at you I'm getting like a 15th so we'll see we'll see I wish it was a sunny day it would have been so perfect <laughs> um, no it's, it's freezing it's like my jacket where's the little red uh where is it oh. <laughs> so lomography uh reached out to me and asked me if i wanted to try out any of their film stocks and one of the roles of film that i asked for was the phantom 8 which is an iso 8 black and white film i sort of thought without doing the maths first i thought this film would be sort of impossible to shoot and I'd have to be doing really long exposures and stuff like that on a tripod. But doing the maths, it's only four stops slower than ISO 100 film and six stops slower than ISO 400. So it wasn't impossible to shoot. On the day I was getting speeds, shutter speeds of like a 30th of a second, which was sort of usable, a bit blurry in some of them, but you, you can get away with it. But it wasn't impossible, I just didn't really do the maths and I thought I'd have to bring a tripod out, but I didn't end up having to. Hmm. I didn't even look at the meter for that one. Okay, three, two, one. Thank you. Are you counting down? Yeah. <laughs> just, so, just so she uh, she knew when to pose. This is polite. So the day we arranged to shoot this video, it turned out to be cloudy, which wasn't ideal, but I was getting shutter speeds of 1 30th to 1 60th in the daylight or in the, under the clouds. So it was usable. I got some shots. I took some portraits of Ruben that came out fine. So on a sunny day, I reckon I would have got, I would have got much faster shutter speeds, but it was usable on a cloudy day, which I didn't think it was going to be. Well, you could argue that I did need to use a tripod because some of them were quite blurry, but I, I think I got away with it for some of them. I initially thought without doing any maths on it, that it would be ridiculously slow. Like I was imagining us bringing out a tripod. Yeah, I was thinking tripod. Um, I was gonna ask if you had one with you. Yeah, and I thought, no, nah, I'm not going. I couldn't be asked to be honest. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't. Cause yeah, you I can't. I'm not. I can't be asked. <laughs> is the reason. But luckily, even though it's cloudy, it's fine. Yeah. What types of photographers do you reckon would use this film? <laughs> <laughs> like Olympic photographers. Wildlife. Um, hummingbird photographers. Hippos. Yeah. Cheetah Stops. photographers. Cheetahs. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, no, of course, actually. Actually, wait. Do you want to see something I found on the street yesterday? Yes. You can't just put this on YouTube. Yeah, I can. Everyone will just call the number, though. Don't call this number. I think that's doable. Should we just try it? Yeah. Okay. Now get your sign out. <laughs> <laughs> Should 
I look are like incredibly sad or urgent. The lens that I was using with the Nikon was a 50mm f1.8. A 1.4 would have been ideal, or 1.2, or f1, or f0.95, obviously, would have been better. But I think I just got away with the 1.8. If you want to shoot this film and you've got a lens that's any slower than that, you, you're going to need a flash or you're going to need to shoot it when it's sunny. I'm finding myself composing with a lot of the sky in it. Because obviously, if I point it towards the sky, I'm hitting like 60th, uh, 125, which is interesting. I know it's because it's a cloudy day. Maybe if I had an f1.4 lens or something, but with this setup, it's making me point the camera like that, which I think is quite, quite interesting because I wouldn't usually compose like that. I'm just going to compose it how I would to hit a 60th. Um, you know, maybe there's something in that, making you shoot differently. Maybe that's what it's for. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely making me think though. Which is, with lomography, you're not meant to think at all. Right. If you're, if you're thinking, you, you've ruined it. But this film's making me think a lot. So it started off cloudy. Bit of blue sky. Um, <laughs> so I'm interested to see what this meter's at. Also, if the sun comes out, I've just spotted another picture. The sun comes out, take some more portraits. Might be, uh, might get a usable shutter speed um, when I'm when I'm not pointing at the sky. So I'm going to take this picture here. Could actually stop the aperture down. Stood in a taxi rank, I think. So what's that thing there? It looks like a satellite or something. I don't really need to point it at the sky anymore. <laughs> Shooting wide open all the time at f1.8. With the lens that I shot on, it wasn't very sharp. They were quite soft. The shots came out very, very soft, especially where it was out of focus which I didn't actually mind. I thought it kind of went hand in hand with the tones of this film, gave it quite a dreamy look. I thought it worked. I didn't, I wasn't annoyed by the softness of the lens for, for this role, for this role of film anyway. There's a line girl. Whose man is this? I've got a really awful picture of it. <laughs> Definitely street view. Yeah, I reckon. Why <laughs> yeah. can't I focus? <laughs> it's not a turbo. The turbo is the best injection. We've just uh, we've just accidentally walked to Oxford Street. I think I'm gonna do some uh, some street photography at ISO 8. See how that goes. <laughs> at f1.8. 15th of a. Awful shot. It's another rule, you know? We're dishing out facts. You gotta follow today. the rules. That's the rule of photography, you have to follow all the rules. That's how it works. That's how you get a good picture. Hmm, interesting subjects, interesting subjects. Oh, here's one. I'd love to shoot another roll of this film stock with maybe a red filter over the lens or a red filter, some gel over the flash, or even in red lighting. I'd love to shoot this film with a big flash. I think the, the speed of the flash, which is around about an 8,000th of a second, combined with how slow this film is, you could get some really sort of Bruce Gilden type street photography you've got a flash you can hold above, things like that. I think that could be really cool. You could get sort of everything trailing behind whilst your portrait is uh, frozen in time. I think that could look very cool. Um, that is something I would like to try 
I did try some street photography as we entered Oxford Street. I was sort of playing into the idea of how awful this would be as a street photography film stock. There are a couple of shots that I actually quite liked. Obviously, I wouldn't go for this film stock to shoot street photography, maybe with a massive flash, but you shouldn't... I wouldn't advise it for this. It did give a really old-school, 30s, Cartier-Bresson vibe, which I quite liked. It looks very old-school, very very old-school monochrome, which uh, is a very cool look, I think. Very contrasty, very suited for street photography, just maybe not the speed of the film. I wasn't over the moon with any individual pictures from this role. Ruben actually took one frame on this role, and I think it was the best picture on the role of a man lying down in Regent's Park. And I just thought, I thought the greens of the leaves came out really nice. Great picture composition wise. That was my favorite picture of this role. So good job, Ruben. But I thought that photo was brilliant. So the tones in this film stock came out really, really contrasty, which is what I expected. Um, I think I can't do the color science in my head but the red tones I think really popped, um, especially in the portraits. Very deep reds, which showed up very dark on the black and white monochrome outcome of this film. Um, so that's something to consider when you're taking portraits. Um, the reds are very strong and will come out very, very dark. So Lomography recommends D96, which is a Kodak developer for this film. Um, I think you can you can tell your lab I think you can tell your lab Lomography's got a page about how to develop this film so you might want to send those instructions off with your roll of film to the lab I didn't actually give them any instructions so I couldn't tell you what this roll of film was developed with which is quite annoying but sorry I didn't I don't know what it was developed with but I would recommend D96 if you're maybe doing it at home or you want to give instructions to your lab speak to them. So this is probably the darkest, most unsuited location to use this film. But I'm going to try and take a picture as respectfully as I can. So a very sticky switch here. There's police on bikes. Bike police. <laughs> it's a plastic canister, I've just realised. Really? Yeah. That's different. That it's probably 3D printed. It's a development guide on the on the uh, canister. Yeah, let's see how that turns out. So ideally, obviously you want to shoot this film in daylight. That's what I would recommend. If I was going to shoot another roll of this, which might happen, I would wait for a sunny day. I think that's very important. You need a lot of light for this film. So that's something to think about. I really enjoyed shooting this roll of film. Thanks again to Lomography for sending it over to me. If you like this video, then give me a like and subscribe if you want to. Cheers. Cheers.